Uh, Rask is saying, uh, Sleepy Fox is sleepy and may disappear soon, so maybe something short. Uh, I also have had a very long day. Yeah. It was a uh, new job. And I have an early start tomorrow, so maybe have a look at Blood Bones and see how we get on with it. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good plan. Alright. So... Yep, it's the the same same old. Yep. Um, so we've got three scores, stamina, skill, and luck, and we also have some starting gold. Um, and we do some dice rolls to determine these things. There's um, also free read mode. Yeah. I I must have missed that before. Free read mode. Can you turn the page? Yeah, of course. Oh. oh my. You have a rewind button and... Huh. Interesting. Okay. That's easy, easy mode. Yeah, and you can fully heal yourself at any time. Also, I've just noticed that it's called the Port of Crabs. <laughs> nothing to do with the sea life <laughs> oh I love it <laughs> ecopunk says I like port I like crabs crabs are people is there another page ah so this is where you choose your oh, we, we never read this far <laughs> <No>. <laughs> First option, please. Yeah. Let's go for our standard adventure mode. Mm -hmm. Where we roll poorly on one of the stats and great on another one and medium on the other. Yeah. Look at it. Let me just jot down. I like to write down our starting stamina and things. Mm hmm. Okay, okay. Let's go for adventure mode. So it's two dice and add 12 for our stamina. Oh, that oh, was that, almost that amazing. Was a, yeah, that was a tease. So our base stamina is 20. It's fine. It's a fine stamina. Mm-hmm. And now on to our skill. This is the most important... Mm, I think it's the most important. I think so. Uh, so... This one is one dice and add six. So... Oh, oh. it's such a tease! <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a base skill of ten. A knife for our luck. Not saying anything. <laughs> can't blame me. You can't blame me. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's see how far we get. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 22 gold. We've never rolled for starting gold before. Did we roll last time? I don't thought we were just given... Yeah, I don't think we've ever rolled for gold before. Maybe it's because it's pirates. Ooh, yeah. I bet gold's more important and I shouldn't gamble it away. <laughs> I'm feeling like luck might be important. In nah. this one. Nah. Right, now it's time for our adventurer's equipment. So we start with a sword, a backpack, a tinderbox, our gold, and a lantern. And then we also have our provisions. Um, and they restore four stamina. Um, in Bloodbones, 
you begin with no provisions, regardless of your chosen difficulty level. Oh. <sighs> oh no. <laughs> I guess we've been adrift. Yeah. Once you've readied your equipment, there's one more thing you should know. During the adventures, uh, during the adventure, you will notice that hours will pass at key points, usually when you've been doing something for a considerable length of time. This is very important, as will become apparent as your adventure progresses. Try not to allow too many hours to pass. Onward to adventure. Well, that's Summon not. Summon the Kraken. Yeah, that's not ominous. Okie dokie. It all started ten years ago when the evil pirate lord Cinnabar murdered your family. At the time, you were only twelve years old and lived with your family in the small fishing village of Clam Beach on the northern coast of Ruddlestone, halfway between the two major ports of the kingdom Harabnab, home to all lawful adventurers and sailors and the sinister Port of Crabs. Life in Clam Beach was not easy, but it did have a peaceful security about it. And then the terrible day came. It was a clear summer day in warming when the huge forbo forbidding black galleon sailed into the bay, flying the dreaded flag of the skull and crossbones. Pirates. The bloodthirsty cutthroats were soon racing up the beach towards the village. The fighting was swift and bloody, Soon most of the folk, the grown folk of Clam Beach had been killed, your father and two siblings dying while trying to defend the village. In the end, the village elders had no choice but to surrender to the marauding raiders and open up the vill village's meagre treasure coffers. The cruel pirate captain came ashore from his ship to collect the booty himself. The sight of him filled you with awe and fear. The pirate was a tall, handsome man with a neatly trimmed, pointed black beard and his hair tied back in a ponytail. He was dressed in the clothes of a nobleman, with a fine scarlet coat trimmed with gold braid and wearing a, a large tricorn hat. At his waist hung a gleaming cutlass and you couldn't help but noticing that on the back of his right hand was tattooed with the image of a grinning black skull. When the raiders had finally gone, filled with feelings of hatred for those who had murdered your family, you asked Ragai, the village soothsayer, who the pirate captain was. That villain is- oh, I'll let you do this bit if you like. That villain is one of the most evil men ever to sail the Twelve Seas of Titan. Was his vehement reply. He is one of the most feared pirate laws of our age. A creature without remorse, a murderer, and a follower of the bloodthirsty voodoo death god... Quezakari, whose mark is a black skull. He is Cinnabar, but most of the terrible atrocities he has committed, he is known as the Blood Bones. And from that moment you vowed that one day you would have your revenge on the evil Cinnabar. Your mother became ill soon after that dreadful day, and three years later she died. On your 16th birthday, you left Clam Beach and made your way to Harabnab, gaining the position of Cap of cabin boy on a ship travelling to the distant continent of Alansia. For the last six years you've sailed all across the globe, but you never forgot the promise you made to yourself a decade ago. Over many voyages, you've tried to learn as much as you can about the rogue captain. You discovered that Cinnabar's galleon, the Virago, is frequently seen sailing in the waters around Nan Nankuno, Bay, Nankuno Bay, and that he has a hidden base somewhere close to the port of Crabs. You also gleaned as much information as you could about the notorious city. And so, when you decide that you are at last ready to confront your enemy, and the chance of passage on a merchant ship sailing to the port of crabs came up, you leapt at the opportunity. Vengeance, you are sure, will soon be yours. The port of crabs is haven to every pirate, buccaneer and freebooter who ply their trade off the coast of the kingdom in Ruddlestone in the old world. As you stand at the prow of the merchantman, Looking towards the land, you can make out the ramshackle jumble of buildings of the infamous city, and the outline of the f old fort that stands above it like some ancient crumbling sentinel. The merchant man jumps a bumps against the stone jetty, and you quickly disembark. Not only is Port of Crabs one of the most dangerous cities in the old world, but a thick fog is starting to roll in from the sea. 
It's late afternoon on a chill day in the month of unlocking, and the docks are bustling with activity. Standing close to the quayside is a large old stone building, which looks like it could withstand a bashing from Hydana, god of the deep himself. Hanging over its sturdy oak door is a faded sign declaring that this is the Jolly Roger. This seems as good a place as any to begin your search for Cinnabar, so you enter the inn. Okay, before you, you turn the page, just a casual mention of Hydana, god of the deep. I think maybe those hours are counting down towards him. Yeah. Oh dear. Let's go! Woo. I'm a cabin boy! The spacious bar inside the Jolly Roger is packed with all manner of scurvy looking sailors and other low lives. The landlord is as big as an ox and has a large anchor tattooed on one arm. No one takes any notice of you as you enter, so you approach the bar and order a tankard of ale, tankard of ale costing one gold piece. You decide to question the landlord about Cinnabar first. Over your tankard of ale, you talk about the weather and the state of trade, and then draw the innkeeper onto the subject of the pirate you seek. Uh, <clears throat> what is what is his voice? He's uh. I hear, Virago piles the waters. You say, I'm surprised we weren't attacked ourselves. Not any more. He doesn't. The landlord the replies. Landlord. Have you not heard? Cinnabar has been dead these last six months. Cinnabar? Dead? You've come all this way after years of harboring desires for revenge, only to, feel, to find that the Dread Pirate Lord has already passed from this world. You ask Landlord how he died. Uh, have you not heard? I thought that everyone as far as the Diamond Islands would know by now. It all happened last hiding. You listen attentively as the innkeeper relates the tale. It appears that Cinnabar and his crew were emptying the hold of a galley sailing from Harabnab to Ar Arkelton in distant Annal land when the renowned bounty hunter Conan caught, uh, caught up them in his ship, the Fortune. Unable to escape, Cinnabar and his men had to defend themselves against the crews of the galley and the Conan. Fierce fighting ensued, with Cinnabar eventually fa falling at Conan's hand, having suffered an incredible number of wounds, his body being lost to the sea. With their leader killed, the surviving members of his crew fled aboard the Virago, returning to the Port of Crabs. Soon after, Cinnabar's second in command, Miro the Red, set off in the Virago amid terrible storms, reportedly to recover her captain per, per oh, to recover her captain's body. Many now believe that the Pirate Lord's galleon sank, and it has not been seen since, the landlord says, concluding his story. You thank him for his help, and in a bewildered daze, you make to leave the inn. You console yourself with the thought that at least the murder of your family has at last been brought to justice. As you leave the Jolly Roger, you feel someone pulling on your jerkin. Turning around, you discover that an old drunk, slumped at a table by himself, is the one trying to attract your attention. Just because he's dead <coughs> doesn't mean that he's at rest, mutters the drunk. Curious about the drunk's words, you sit down opposite the old man and ask what he means. Let's just say, you don't want to be go believing everything you hear, but I know what's been going on. Oh, oh yes, old Dregs knows. Cinnabar isn't really dead, see? He's uh, coming back. The old man says in a harsh whisper. Intrigued, you press Dreg to tell you more, but he suddenly becomes serious and looks around the barroom uneasily. Not, not here. Uh, meet me outside in uh, ten minutes. You nod in agreement and leave the Jolly Roger. Now turn over. Oh, buy me a drink first. <laughs> Tendrils of fog are now swirling around the boats in the harbour and oozing along the streets of the town. When the ten minutes are up, you quickly return to the Jolly Roger and sneak down the side alley next to it. In the midst, in the mist and the sh shadows at the end of the narrow alleyway, you can make out three figures standing over a fourth, covering on the ground at their feet. Wasting no time, 
you draw your sword and dash towards them. Hearing your approach, the pirates turn to face you. The burly characters are ugly, scarred rogues, and the biggest of them, who's easily wielding a heavy wooden club in one hand and holding a billwhip in the other, looks as if he has some ochre blood in his lineage. At the pirates' feet lies Dreg, beaten, bruised, and only just conscious. I thought he had a tennis racket, not a whip. <laughs> He is the snooper, growls the half ogre. You're no match for us. By the time we finished with you, you'll be feeding the fishes. Shrimps. Or rather, the shrimps will be feeding on you. The other two pirates burst into a coarse laughter at their companion's joke. Yar, your fish bait. Still, Rafa, uh, still laughing, the ruffians advance towards you. Apart from the half-ogre, there's a well-built, bearded man missing most of his teeth, and a leaner rogue with two ugly red scars running down the right-hand side of his face. You may be about to engage in your first fighting fantasy battle. Would you like to know more about how combat works? Nah. nah I think we're good. How will you deal with the ruffian stepping menacingly towards you? To charge one of the pirates, turn to 357. If you want to stand firm and prefer to fight, turn to 74. Or to try and escape the running back along the alleyway, turn to one three five. I bet we can just get one down if we just charge them. I reckon we should charge only, them. Only have to fight two. I think we're quite a, an impulsive cabin boy. Yeah. All these years of of resent growing, you know, you just want to go mm -hmm. for it. The pirates are not expecting this reaction from you. You're able to wound one of the rogues before they know what's going on. It's time to fight. Alright. Skill of six. Okay. After the wizard fight, or the warlock fight, this is like a nice, easy, casual downing of some pirate dudes. Yeah. Out of interest, did we get to pick our little portrait there, or has it always just been that? Oh, um, I think it's an options. I mean, I it's the best one. I don't know what the others look like, but that's the best one. <laughs> I just don't think it's Cabin Boy. Yeah. Just have a quick check on the options then. Sure. So these are our options. It. Before the monk. This one. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's very, very green thumbed, isn't he? Oh, we can change the name. Yeah. What should we call ourselves? Um. I was gonna. Oh, what's the name of the cabin boy in Captain Pugwash? Pugwash. Oh, um. Jim. Should we go for Jim? Why not? Oh, we could name it after one of the chat people. Who wants to be the character? Yeah, who likes to be our, our cabin boy? Just call him Rusk. Rusk's been here all day. Yeah. So I think I closed that. There we go. Aha! <laughs> they are surprised as the orcish mohawk lady <laughs> turns into. <laughs> Face the second pirate. Sort of like the headhunters all over it. <laughs> Yay! Easy peasy. We've defeated the scoundrels. Half ogre steps forward to fight you. Will you face your opponent? Opponent, 
Or will you try to escape? Uh, yeah, we can take this dude. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. Dropping his whip, the half ogre moves in ready to attack you with his club. Get ready to fight. Alright. Oh, could you imagine losing at this point? <laughs> yeah. Nope, that's that's a win. That's not even a draw. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's a lose. Okay. Kill the half ogre. The last of the pirates falls, and with some relief, you sheath your sword. It looks as if the pirates have beaten Dreg within an inch of his life, and he's failing fast. You do your best to make the old man comfortable, and he opens his eyes. Uh, thank you, stranger. He gasps. But I'm a goner now. They're up to something, you know. You ask him who he's talking about. Cinnabar's crew, the pirates of the Black Skull. Looking at the hand of Drag's assailants, you see that each wears a tattoo of a grinning Black Skull. I've seen them meeting up again around the taverns in the city. Silas Gallows, Keyhole Jack, Old Crivens, even Molly, uh, Molu, the witch doctor. They're planning something all right. Rumor says Meryl the Red found Cinnabar's body and that's that's that he's not rightly dead but he's not rightly alive either see it's all that voodoo and black magic they meddle in not right it isn't I've heard tell that they're planning something big tonight you think old Snide and the guard would be looking into it, but truth be told, no one's been able to locate their eye out. Drag coughs <gasps> weakly. He's coming back. We'll all be doomed, stranger. Beware the black skull. Blood bones is coming back. And then he's gone. Laying the old man down, you ponder his last words and what your next action should be. So Cinnabar is not really dead. In that case, you may still have a chance for revenge. But what did Dreg mean when he said that Cinnabar is not really alive either? Dreg has given you several clues about your enemy and where you should start your search for him. And it seems that time is of the essence if you want to stop the Pirates of the Black Skull. The old man mentioned that the Pirates of the Black Skull were gathering again in the Port of Crabs, so they may have a hidden base somewhere in the city. But of course at present, you've no idea where it may be. Before leaving Drag, you search the bodies of his assailants for any further clues. You find nothing helpful, but you do discover that one was carrying a bottle of rum. Drinking the rum will restore four stamina points. You now have six options available to you. Okay. Alright. You could visit some of the taverns and inns yourself in the hope of finding out more. Perhaps you could visit the notorious gambling pits, a possible source of information and a way of increasing your gold pieces. Alternatively, it might be a good idea to better equip yourself by visiting the markets before you set out on your quest. You could try to find out more about the Black Skull and the cult of Whiskerai. And then again, although Governor Montargo has certainly allowed the port to remain a safe haven for buccaneers and freebooters, you may do well to get the help of the authorities against Cinnabar. Or you could take the direct approach, abandon your search for further information, and instead look for the pirate's hidden base. base. Okay. So, there was an option that stood out to me. Mm -hmm. So the gambling one. What? Why would it be the gambling one? Because <laughs> <laughs> you definitely don't have a gambling problem. Okay, honestly, I feel like we should do them in order. They feel like going to the, the taverns for information will help us at the gambling pits, looking for stuff there. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we can't buy stuff in the market without money, so getting some money at the gambling pits is a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to find more about the cult, probably um, we'll find out who we can speak to about that at the market. Yeah. And uh, the governor isn't going to do anything unless we have information on this cult and stuff. Yeah. And just looking for a hidden base isn't going to work without all the stuff before. Seems like a sensible. The thing we've got to bear in mind is our hours will take up. So the more things yes. that we do, the better prepared that we are. Perhaps the in stronger case, our enemy may be. Maybe we should skip the, the taverns and go straight to the gambling pits. You've, you've talked me into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real gambling. It's not my money. <laughs> okay, we're going to set ourselves a little quota before we go in. Of like how mean? much gold we're allowed to use. All 21. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to keep something for the market. The saying is, go big or go home, and I'm already at home. <laughs> <laughs> but you are right, yes. Right. Should we start the gambling pit? Mm -hmm. and then... So, if we bet two, mm -hmm. and then we don't win, then we can bet four. And if we don't with that, we can bet eight. And that at least gets all the money we've lost back so far, right? Okay. And if we don't get that back, we bet 16. <laughs> and that's when the problems start. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm okay for the 248. That would mm -hmm. take us to 14 of our gold. But at that point, I feel like we have to stop. Oh yeah, we won't have 16 at that point. Right. Yes, we've, we've okay. Got 21 gold. If so, that's even how we can bet. Yeah. It might be like we have odds and whatnot. Maybe they'll keep it simple. Guess we'll find out. The gambling pits lie within the area of the city known as the Claws, the poorest and most dangerous part of the port. The pits themselves are housed in a vast stone building with a large iron studded oak door. This entrance is flag flanked by two troll guards. As you walk past them and through the door, they give you a cursory glance and one says roughly, Remember. Oh. Remember, no fighting. Inside the gambling pits lies, lie under a thick cloud of pipeweed smoke and are packed with the unsavory and roguish clientele you would expect. Mingling with the crowds, you check out the different games that are on offer. After a brief look around, you discover three that interest you, which will you investigate further. So we've got the Arrow of Providence, Calabrius's cal uh, Calculator, or the Amazing Amarno, or we can leave. Okay, so, gut reaction, the Amazing Amarno sounds like we're going to get robbed. Yeah. Calabrius' calculator sounds like we could make money if we're good at math. I, I'm a very calculating person. Mm -hmm. I feel like Arrow of Providence seems like the roulette table. Yeah. And we're not very lucky. Oh, no, we're not. No. Oh, yeah, let's, let's do the one that has the math. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Why did we go to the gambling pits? We, we have zero luck. <laughs> Calabrese's calculator is a large mechanical contraption made of countless cogs, levers and crankshafts. The main feature of the machine, however, is a large panel with five windows in it, behind which are five drums with numbers embossed on them. Standing next to the calculating device is its operator, a wizardly looking man who you assume is Calabrese. Step up... Oh. Step. Mm. Step up, step up. Who will accept the challenge of Calabrese's calculator? Only two gold pieces and you could win ten. The man calls out. You imagine that this challenge involves some kind of puzzle generated by the machine. 
If you have the gold pieces and want to accept the challenge, turn to 364. Or we can go to the Arrow of Providence. Or the Amazing Armano. Or we can leave. I think we should try yeah. it. Yeah. Ten gold pieces for just two. Okay. Ah! ah a contestant! Calabrius exclaims. Come forward, don't be shy now. Where's your money? You hand the man your two gold pieces. Calabrius moves to the side of the huge calculating device and pulls the lever. There's a lot of noisy clanking and the number of drums spin around at great speed. Gradually, one by one, they come to a stop behind their windows, the last one revealing itself to be blank so the panel looks like this. One, nine, twenty-five, fifty-seven, blank. Okay. The calculator has devised its cunning conundrum. This machine can baffle even the greatest minds of Ruddlestone. Can you work out what the next puzzle uh, number in the sequence should be? Okay. Um. Right. Uh. How are you with these these number puzzles? Um, hit or miss. Sometimes I can figure them, and other times, other times I just get confused. Okay, so it's plus eight, plus sixteen, uh, plus thirty-two. Oh, so, oh, next so one it's is just plus forty, or do it be plus sixty-four? Plus 64. 64. So that's. Uh, brain. 60. Uh, 98. No, 96. 96. Wow, it was the very first thing that I tried. <laughs> okay. Are we certain? Pretty sure. So that's. Adding. Is that adding the right amount? Yeah, so it's the first number was plus 8, and then uh, 16 plus 9 is 25, and then 25 plus 32 is 57. So uh, 64 plus. Hang on, no, that is wrong. I, I wrote down 32 for some reason. All oh, right, uh, no, it is 57 plus 64. Oh, almost. Okay, 57 plus 64. So it would be 121? Um, 110, 121. Yes. Oh, that was close. Okay. Yeah! Ooh, good thing you caught that. <laughs> I just added 64 and 32. Yeah! Did it... That is correct! Congratulations! He says with a forced smile. Oh, sorry, I'm reading your bit now. <laughs> <laughs> he reluctantly hands you a bag containing ten gold pieces. You also gain one luck point. But do we? Where do would we, we like to go next? Can we not play it again? I, I think the book only has one, <laughs> one sequence of numbers. And no, we didn't get a I like, I like to check, right. just in case. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's never that kind. No. Shall we try the Iowa Providence or the Amazing Armada? Oh, we'll at least have a look at it. 
Yeah. Should we start with Arrow? Mm -hmm. Oh, and I bet Amazing Armado is not actually a gambling thing. Hmm. The Arrow of Providence is a popular game of chance in the gambling pits. It's made of a large circular board dividing into 12 sections, each painted with a legend. An arrow-like pointer, pointer has been attached to the centre of the board so that it can be spun. To play the game will cost 2 gold pieces, but you'll be playing for a potential jackpot of 10 gold pieces. If you've got the gold pieces and want to play, turn to 346, and if you don't want to have a go, you may leave the Arrow of Providence to turn to 260. I think this goes based on the luck, doesn't it? I think it might. Should we try um, it? So it probably wants us to roll under our luck, right? That's how it works? I think so. I don't think we're that lucky, but you can go ahead if you like. And this is me, the gambling man. <laughs> oh, see, I'm tempted to have a go. But I'm also aware of the time. Mm. Oh, the time in real life? Or the time in game? Time in game. Because uh, I don't think 260 was the page before. Let's... Mm. I don't know. I'll let you decide. It would be hypocritical of me to... <laughs> tell you that gambling is bad. I'd be happy to leave it. We did make ten. Mm -hmm. So we've got a nice... Made eight. Oh yeah, we've made eight. Um, so we've got a nice number now. Yeah, let's leave it. Okay. Let's go visit Almado. Armadillo. As you leave the game, you catch a whiff of an interesting conversation. You must test your luck to figure out whether you can clearly hear what's being said. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh no. There we go. That's the first. <sighs> and then we lose a luck point. Yep. Yeah. We did that in the other order. As you elbow your way through the bustling crowd, you try to listen to some of the conversations. But nothing stands out as important. What will you do now? Cry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's visit the amazing arm armadillo. Yeah. Beneath a brightly painted banner bearing his name sits the amazing Armarno. The man has the look of a Lendl, Han La Lendl lander about him, with sallow skin and a long, thin moustache. He's performing a trick with three playing cards and has attracted a small crowd of curious onlookers. Two of the cards are black and one is white, and the aim of the game seems to be to guess which of the cards is the white one when they've been shuffled and laid face down on the small table in front of the man. To play the game, you have to place a stake of two gold pieces to win a potential prize of 10 gold pieces. Although at the moment, no one seems to be having much like luck against our Marno. If you have the gold and want to play, turn to 32. And if you don't want to play, then you've got the following options. You can go to the Ar Arrow of Providence, uh, go to the calculator, or leave the gambling pits. I mean, it's obviously a scam, right? I think let's so. do it. Yeah, let's go for it. If we didn't play the Arrow, Let's play this one. Mm -hmm. You do not have to wait long for your turn and hand over two gold pieces. Eagle eyed, you watch closely as the man shows you where the white card is, and then places all the cards face down on the table. He deftly switches their positions at an incredible speed, but you keep concentrating on the white card. When he finally stops, you point to the card you're sure is the white one. With a smile, Armarno turns it over and reveals it to be black. You have a sneaking suspicion that the amazing Armarno was conning you. Do you want to challenge the trickster about the suspected fraud? Or if you have enough gold pieces and want to play another round to confirm suspicion? Alternatively, you could move on from the stand and take a closer look at something else. I think, just my opinion, mm -hmm. 118. Like, 
we, we get his number and like this one we'll figure out how he's cheating because we know he's cheating mm -hmm. and then we can call him out specifically on what he's cheating on yeah and then he'd be like ah you are clever or maybe the crowd will turn on him and be like you you conning piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be one of the two mm -hmm. or <laughs> we might not figure out what he's doing yeah I don't know how clever we are You lay down another two gold pieces. This time you're positive you have the right card, but when Armarno turns it over, it's black again. He has to be deceiving you. Now, will he challenge the fraudster? If so, turn to 258. Or will yeah, you leave let's his table? Challenge. Alternatively, we can leave the gambling pits. Should we challenge him? Let's challenge him, finally. Yeah, and then we'll get into a fight. Uh oh. You accuse me of cheating? exclaims Armarno, incensed. I have never been so assaulted in all my days just because my hands are faster than the eye. Angered by the trickster's words, you jump to your feet and in doing so knock over the table. The three cards fall onto the floor. They're all black. Armarno must have palmed the white. You were right all along. Cursing the man, you prepare to unsheath your sword but stop feeling a strong hand on your shoulder. The gruff voice of a troll growls in your ear. I said no fighting. Before you can stop them, the two trolls snatch your sword from you and between them, they deposit you weaponless, pride bruised in the street outside. Without your sword, you will have to fight with your attack strength reduced by three points until you can get a hold of another weapon. Disgruntled, you leave to search elsewhere. Two hours pass. That was... The worst. Yep. All Fuck right. you, Armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> Choosing a location you haven't already visited, where do you want to go now in your search for information? Two hours have passed since your search begun. So you've got the taverns and inns, the markets, the temple quarter, to see Governor Montagro himself, or, if you're done looking for information or have some idea where they might be hiding, you start looking for the pirate secret base. So that was a net gain of four gold. Mm -hmm. um, I bet we don't have enough for buying good stuff at the market. Maybe... just the tavern? Yeah. You visit many of the seediest drinking establishments in the city, including the Cat and Cockroach, Angar's, Mu a Angar's Mutiny, and the Barnacle Tavern. However, your inquiries and investigations attract the attentions of those whose interests you did not want to arouse. Having just left yet another smoky bar room, you suddenly find yourself confronted by a group of pirates and black-robed devotees, all followers of Quez Karai. They've been alerted to your mission by your endless inquiries. Realising the danger you're in from Cinnabar's cronies, you run for it, as there are far too many for you to fight by yourself. Test your luck. Oh dear. Snake eyes? Ugh. That was the exact same thing that we rolled last time. Running hell for, rather, for leather. You round a corner and run straight into more of Cinnabar's pirates. You are soon overcome and receive a blow to the back of your head from a heavy kosh. You lose consciousness. Turn to 158. Uh oh. You come to, tied to a stone altar before a hideous bony likeness of the Fudu death god, Quezkarai. You only just have time to take in the fact that you are in a large underground chamber packed with pirates and devotees before a black robed priest plunges his sacrificial knife into your heart. Your very blood shall be used to help bring your enemy back to life. The end. Oh. Um. Gambling is bad, I've... kids. Yes. I, I, I agree with this statement and I will release the P PSA gambling awareness video. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good place to leave it for tonight. I think so. Uh. 
I hope you've all had some fun. Um, Sorry, Brosk. Um, you yeah. died. What I'll do is just leave this blank for next time. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, we'll pick a new book? Yep. Um, I will... What we'll probably do is, um, before the stream starts, we'll put up a list of options um, and people can vote for which book you'd like to see. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll make sure that that's nice and unlocked and ready to go. Um, we can always keep Blood Bones as our uh, return to book if um, we finish, we finish it. early or yeah. we don't know what we're doing. Um, <laughs> although I hope that next time it doesn't end as quickly. Maybe if like our luck is above seven. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll probably pick out four options mm -hmm. between us, and then we'll uh, let people vote on the on the Facebook or on the on the the uh, Discord. Yeah, we'll, we'll hop it in both, and then we'll we'll tally up the votes. Mm -hmm. um, but no double voting though. Yeah. Hope you've all had lots of fun, and we'll catch you in a few weeks' time. Okay. Bye. Bye.